This is going to be a relatively quick video tutorial on ImageNomic portraiture. The reason that it's going to be relatively quick isn't because I'm going to be cutting corners, but simply because the program does not need to be as complicated as many people seem to make it. Mostly we're going to focus on the girl on the left just to make life a little bit easier. I'm going to go filter, ImageNomic portraiture. Now, when you look down the left hand side, you're going to see all of your main settings right here. You have a couple preview options at the top with the main preview in the middle. And then on the right hand side, we have this big dead empty space. Now I could most definitely complicate this video by talking about every one of these little sliders down here. I could talk about what each and every one of these does, but there is absolutely no reason for that. Zero. I'm going to make life a lot easier for you. The first thing you're going to do is turn off the enhancements. Every one of these enhancements are basic functions within Adobe Photoshop. And you're actually better off using them in Photoshop as opposed to using them here because it's easier to make any changes after the fact when you're not inside a portraiture. However, there may be some off chance that you want to use these with some batch functionality or setting this program up to work as an action. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to straight up turn this off. Next, here we have a skin tone mask. And basically, it's going to create a mask around just the skin tones. To begin this video, I'm actually going to turn that off so that you can see the on and off difference of that, which you may or may not actually want, because there's plenty of times that you may not even want the skin tone mask on at all. And that's narrowing this program down to a single dialog box up here called Detail Smoothing. Fine is going to focus on the absolute details of the pores, the wrinkles, and the immediate area around those minute details that you're really trying to focus on. However, if you were to make that a high number, what happens is you lose contrast, which means you lose detail. And we don't actually want to lose that fine detail. So we're going to take this fine and move it all the way down to the left so that it's minus 20. I know, it seems crazy, but we don't want to disturb the details. Think about fine hairs. We want to leave those alone. Then we have medium. Now medium is a slightly larger area than that. And the best setting that seems to work is zero. We aren't actually going to touch that at all. And the last setting that we're going to change is going to be large. Large is the general area around the flesh. Uh, so the pores and the wrinkles and everything. It's not the immediate area, it's just the general area around that. So we're going to take that and we're going to make that very, very large. And I'll be honest with you, I've actually looked at it and I can't really tell much of a difference between the large being at 20 or minus 20 unless we really crank up the next setting down, which is threshold. Threshold is simply a slider that says more of the effect or less of the effect. So let me zoom in for you and I move it over here and you look at this skin. Right now, threshold is set to zero, which means absolutely nothing is happening right now. This is the original image. If I take threshold and I move it all the way up to 40, you can see what a huge difference that is making to this image. Now here's the thing, more than likely you do not want a threshold of 40 because it really is too much in many cases. So consider cutting it in half to 20. Now when you look at this image, so yeah, at 20 it softened up her skin and it's looking pretty good. You know, when you look in this area, that's not bad. However, you might be saying to yourself that you can see this affecting the hair as well. Yeah, but why do you want the hair to be contrasted? You probably don't. So what I would actually recommend is to leave it just like this, where it does affect the hair. So maybe you don't want the effect as strong as this with this threshold of 20 that's affecting the hair like this. But maybe all you need to do is reduce this from 20 down to 10 now it's a much more subtle effect. Just because this program will do massive changes does not mean that you need to do the massive changes. At its core, 
all you should be using portraiture for is subtle changes. And in this case, if you were to leave the hair being a little bit softer so that it isn't as sharp and contrasty, then all the better. However, what I will give you is this. If I was to bring this up to 20, you can see that this area up here starts getting very soft, and we really don't want that affected. Even worse, over here, this wall is just being completely blown away. We do not want that. So in a case like this, what you may very well want to do is turn on the skin tone mask. So if I click from off to on, Immediately what it does is it localizes this threshold change to the skin tones. What this means is when I click on and off, you should be able to see the skin tone being changed and not the background, not this hat she's wearing, and not her hair. While we can certainly leave this mask alone and let the program decide what is the flesh tone, probably a better way of doing it is to click on the eyedropper and come in right between the eyes, which is just a deeper area of where the flesh tone is. And if you look at this preview off to the side, it shows you what the mask currently is when I click on the eyedropper. And that's what it decided to use. But if I come over here, you can watch it change. And you can decide if that's what you want. So if you like that, click it. And then notice the eyedropper turns to the eyedropper plus so we can add to this selection. Now I'm going to recommend that we don't in this case because if we add to get more of this flesh tone, we are running the risk of grabbing this background and that's not at all what we want. So if you look now, you can see that we are not affecting anything except the flesh tone. And that's coming to us benefit of this skin tone mask. So now just to recap, all we've done is we've made fine minus 20, medium of 0, large of plus 20, and we've adjusted the slider of threshold simply to say more or less of the effect within the skin tones that we designated by turning on the mask and clicking the point between the person's eyes. Really, that is entirely how this program needs to be used. If you do anything else, you are either damaging the image or you are doing way more work than you need to. This is literally a 5, 10, or 15 second alteration to the original image. That is it. That is the beauty of this program. So if you do school portraits, wedding portraits, any kind of portraits, this program is amazing what you can do in seconds of your time. And in fact, if seconds are too much work for you, you can set portraiture up as a batch action and it will sit through the entire folder of everybody and you can either set it to a threshold that is fairly low of let's say 10 and by doing that, it'll open all the images, apply a 10 and save it and then you now have cleaned up skin tones by letting the program automatically decide where the skin tones are. Another thing you can do is let the batch actions run on the folder, have portraiture open it up, and then all you simply need to do is adjust the threshold to more or less. That's it. You can be zipping through an entire folder of images in seconds. There is absolutely no reason to make this harder than it needs to be. Now, I can also hear one of the things that you're saying. Well, up here we have the presets that have all these extra settings. Well, you know how you have presets in Photoshop and presets in Lightroom and most of the time those presets aren't very good. Well, I'm not saying these aren't good. They, they, they serve a function. However, these are not clean presets, meaning they are damaging the image. They're altering the image. They're doing their own thing. For example, if I click on Glamour, look at that. That has completely blown out this background and it's completely doing its own thing. That is not the way that I work as a professional. Now, I will give you this. On occasion, I will come down to tones because I think this is a cleaner way to work. And I personally will drop this contrast down to something more like four and the brightness down to more like two. 
you know, if I'm looking for some artsy look that is more of a fashion statement, then I will use tones, but I will pull it down. And that's me personally. However, if you are working with straight portraits, I'm telling you, change it to the default, make fine minus 20, large plus 20, and then all you need to do is adjust the threshold slider. Now in this particular image, when we have the threshold at 20, you can see that it's still a little bit heavy. You can see in her cheek, it's looking a little bit flat, as well as in her neck where it completely removes the detail of what's going on. So if 20 is too much, drop it down to 10. There's no need to make this harder than it needs to be. You know, once again, we're still losing detail here, and it's still a little bit pasty here. So you know what? Drop it again. Let's take it from 10 down to 5. Does that work for you? Yes or no? If you still think it looks too pasty, so then drop it down to 3. It's a very subtle change, and it doesn't need to be overkill. You don't need to make this look like you've put all this extra work into it. All you're trying to do is clean up the skin quickly and efficiently. Now technically, if you wanted to make a slightly larger production about this, we could bring this threshold back up to 10 and let this skin get too much in the neck and the cheek and then create a mask within Photoshop which will then dim back these two particular areas or simply remove this area completely from the portraiture effect. But now consider that it's not just her face that we're worried about. In this particular image it's her chest. Now look at how many blemishes are removed by simply putting this setting at 10. It's not even a lot. If you come over here to her arm, you can see how much of that is just being wiped away. Now there are larger areas, and that is where you would use your clone stamp or healing brush. You would not go so far as to crank this all the way up to let portraiture do it. It can. It did a very nice job in the arm, but you let other areas go too heavy. Now they may be okay if you start masking in Photoshop and whatever, but the beauty of this program is to dial it back softly so that you can do batches and large amounts without making too much of a production about it. Now I'll come over here to this arm just so you can see the rest of the image. That's before and that's after. Yes, there are still things left behind. We can clean that up afterwards, not a problem. But what I really want to show you is over here in this arm, there is so much more detail that still is left behind. Look at this. Yes, it's cleaned it up, and yes, it's softened some of these areas, but so much of this hair is still remained left behind. And once again, that's coming from this fine slider. We're not letting fine alter the contrast between the hair and the skin tones. If I were to crank this all the way up, you should be able to see that fill back in, and that's not what we want. We still want to retain that detail. I'm going to zoom out, and that was before, and that's after. This face, not so much of a change, but when you look at the arms, huge difference, right? If you found this video tutorial review helpful, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can find more tips and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.